Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This video is going to show you how to use a few wallworm tools together. Today we're going to learn how to use Corvex, PropLine, and wallworm model tools. I'm going to show you how they work together and how they can help you create more robust and dynamic scenes in a more efficient manner than previously you may have been able to do. In this scene I have a few props that I've already made. A bench, a sign, and a trash can. And I already have Wallworm Model Tool helpers assigned to each one of these. If you don't understand what Wallworm Model Tool helpers are, uh, you can go to some of the other videos in the documentation and learn them. But essentially, they're representations of models for exporting into the Source Engine. Now we want to distribute these props along a path and a little wall. So we're going to make those and we're going to show you how it's easy to distribute those with some of these tools. We're going to start our scene here by creating a sidewalk. We're going to start that with a Corvex object. I'm going to add it in the scene and I'm going to set this as a as a wall Corvex object and I'm going to give it a width of 96 Then I'm just going to create a spline that controls the contour of this wall. Now if you want uh, you can hit snap to grid and force every point on this to be snapped to the grid And right now we're just snapping to the edges or to the grid points for the inner part of the wall or the sidewalk. And I'm actually going to tell this to go negative 96. It'll make sense here in a second. And I want the height of this to only be about 8. So this is going to be our sidewalk. And we're going to give this texture which I have open in the material editor in another window. I'm going to give it a texture of uh, concrete. I'm going to tell it to use a specific width and height and in this case I'm going to choose uh, 96. And I'm going to tell it to flow from the side so that the UVs are always going to follow along the shape of the path. Now I'm going to create another Corvex object. And for this one I also want it to be a wall object. And the width for this one we'll choose 32. And the height of this one we're going to choose um, 48. And we're just going to pick the spline that we already made. So now there's this wall that goes along this same path. And I'm going to apply another texture that I have in my material editor on the side. These are textures from CSGO. And like the other one, I'm going to change this to a specific height. In this case, I'm going to do 128. I'm going to tell the, the top to follow from the sides. And I actually want the, uh, the texture to offset in the V. So I'm going to move it down so it looks like this. And on the bottoms, I'm going to move it a little bit differently. Just so it looks like this. So now we have our wall. This wall is a little bit thick. So let's go ahead and change the wall height on all of these to 16. So now the next thing we want to do is get these props to go along here. And here's something that is not documented much in Wallworm, but to use Wallworm props with a prop line object, you should usually use the proxies. You don't want to use the actual model objects. So to do that, we're going to select these three Wallworm model tool helpers. We're going to go to the level design and choose the Wallworm Model Tool Proxy Tools floater. When we do this, it's going to have a list of the Wallworm Model Tool objects in the scene. I'm sure, there's actually some that are hidden here. And I want to use the trash can, the wooden bench, and the wooden sign. And we press this Make Prox button. When this happens, sometimes there's a glitch where the object gets flown back to the main prop source. That's okay. We'll just get these props here 
and move them back. Looks like there was a glitch there and the material took a second to appear. It's okay. So now I have these three um, proxies. And these are just for the use of the prop line tool. We're actually not going to export these or the main models into our level. We're just going to export uh, the props we're going to scatter along here. So to tell the objects not to export as the level, you'll select them and choose this option that here that says exclude export of model. So now these instances, even though they're in the scene, they will not export into the VMF. At this point, what we're going to do is select the spline. So now we just have the spline that's used in uh, these both of these Corvex objects. And we're going to select, at the moment, just the bench and the trash can. Now that I have those selected, now I can choose wall worm, level design, and create prop line with selection. Now what this does is it takes all the objects that are selected and takes all the shapes that are selected and creates what's called a prop line from them. And by default I have this set up to divide, so it's going to make one in the middle and one at each end. But now I'm going to go through here and actually have this uh, distributed the way I want to. So in this case, I want a prop to be every 128 units. So I'm going to change that to 128. And then I'm going to change this divide to uh, spacing. So now there's always a prop every 128 units. There's some other things I want to do in here to get this to work how I want. First of all, I don't want these inside the wall. So I'm going to go to the transformations and I'm going to increase or decrease the Y. So I'll bring those out a little bit. I also want this to be offset a little bit. I don't want the first um, prop outside of there. And we need to bring these up some. So we're going to go back to the transformations. We're going to bring this up. Now the trash can, it looks like, is at a different, has a different uh, pivot point than this bench. So I can control that by using the manager and I'm going to go to the uh, wooden bench and add a custom attribute to it. I'm going to tell it to override the translations on this one. So on this one we're going to again go out some and now we're going to go up in the z-axis. So now these props are all like that. Now the next thing I want to do is change one of the options to do average vector. In that case, so we don't have this going through the wall here, we're going to change that to the average vector. So now these, these benches and trash cans are all lined up along there like that. Now we're going to put some of our signs back here. So in this case, I'm going to grab that spline, that spline again. So I just have that line. And now I'm going to choose the sign and again, I'm going to choose wall worm, level design, and create prop line with selection. And this time, it put three again at the beginning because I have my default set to use divide. And in this case, I'm going to tell it to use it at every knot. And I'm going to have the it go back a little bit and we're going to offset it up some so it's higher up along here now we have these signs uh, that are up behind now there's some other things we can do if we don't want this trash can to always be um, if we want it so the texturing doesn't follow we want to randomize the Z uh, the spin of it a little bit go back to our manager and we're going to add uh, the custom attributes to that also. And we're going to override the rotations and we're going to give it a random Z offset spin. So each one is going to spin a little bit so the textures that are right here will not be the same one as you're walking along so it will look like they're uh, not repeating over and over as you walk along. And one of the things that makes this really cool is 
this sidewalk, this wall, and all of these prop lines are all controlled by one single spline. So if I go back and select, and there's something in prop line in Corvex, that if you go to the splines, if you double click the spline that's there, it will select that spline. Or if you right click, it will select it and go straight to vertex subobject mode. But because they're part of the same spline, I can actually go in here and, and select these points in the spline. I can just take one single spline point and move it and the entire, the entire shape of this moves. Now, there is actually a, a quirk in prop line objects and that is while they're being calculated in real time, uh, if you try to move uh, one of the spline shapes around, it doesn't really follow with you. In fact, the gizmo can fly off in weird directions and you're not sure. So at this point, we can go back to our prop line and deactivate it for the moment. We're gonna do that for both of these. And now I can right click, go back to the vertex here for this object and then set it to wherever I want. So in this case, I'm moving around the, the shape of this sidewalk. So now we updated just this one spline and again, uh, it updated several objects at once here. I'm gonna go back to these prop lines and reactivate them so that they update in the viewport. And here we have an example of this spline, this prop being kind of facing the wrong direction from where I want it to be. So for this one, we're gonna go back up to its transform and turn on average vector. Now average vector may or may not work 100% how you want. Um, you may find that at times, in this case, this prop, uh, the sidewalk isn't exactly aligned to the way we want it, but some of them are. So you kind of sometimes have to mess with the settings to see if they are what you want. So we'll go back to this one again and we'll turn off average vector and see if it's what we want. But no, right here, this is not lined up. So in this case, once we're done with this, we can collapse this to individual props, which we can go down here into these options here that say instantiate, in which case our prop line object will be deactivated However, it made instances of our prop at these locations. So we can go in here to this specifically and tweak it a little bit and, and such. And we can go back and do that with all of these. Of course, at this point, once we've baked it, these props are no longer being uh, controlled by the spline that they were on anymore. Uh, they're just manually wherever you place, but they're going to be left where the last setting was. So before I finish this, I'm going to just show you a couple other things. Assume that uh, we actually wanted to get these props to be parametric again, uh, based off of this prop line. When we instant instantiated them, they are actually all children of the prop line that we deactivated. We can select those all quickly by double clicking the prop line. Now if we want to delete those all, we just deselect our prop line object, okay? Now it's only the children that we had uh, instantiated. We can delete those, I'm going to hit the delete key, go back to this prop line object, and then reactivate it. And when we reactivate it, we'll get our parametric ones. So again, these are all controlled by um, the spline that's underneath them. And now, there's a couple more things. Um, if you're uh, working with the source engine and you really want to make sure that all of your props are exactly aligned to grid, there's an option over in the Modify tab. This says Snap to Grid for the translations. We're going to click that and all of our props here that we didn't uh, have a custom override for will now be snapped to the grid. And again, we can go back over here to uh, this one and tell it to also snap to the grid. So all of the, all of the models are exactly on the grid points. And also with our world geometry, which is this wall and with this uh, sidewalk, if we go to the Corvex objects that control those, there are also snap to grid options. So we're gonna snap these to the one by one grid and we're gonna do the same thing with our wall here. 
And at this point, I'm going to save and we're going to export this into source. We're just going to export it into a VMF and look at it in Hammer so you can see that. And we're going to export scene as VMF. And I had already previously exported these models and that's why they're already in the game here. And I'm going to save it as this. And we're going to open up Hammer here and open up our scene. And now you can see there's all of our props all aligned up there and all of our objects in the world geometry and in case you didn't know this every Corvex object is automatically one uh, grouped object and if it had been tagged as a funk detail it would have been all one funk detail object and if we zoom in here you're going to notice that every single object let me decrease the grid spacing here so we can see every vertex in our brush geometry is 100% on the grid. We zoom in to any point in here, you're going to see that every single vertex of all of our brushes, the sidewalk and walls are all on the grid. So again, um, none of these props in the middle exported because we had told their settings to ignore. And for the wall, for the main models that belong to Wallware Model Tools, that's controlled inside the Wallware Model Tool helper. Again, we can open up its settings over here on the right hand side and see it has exclude from VMF. For the proxies, which are these objects over here, they also have an exclude function down here. And that's why these ones are excluded. And then the prop line is just referencing those and then placing those transformations. So I hope that this video has been helpful in explaining to you how you can use uh, PropLine, Corvex, and Wallware model tools together uh, to create quick and convincing environments in a very parametric fashion. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com, including all the other tools. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you, and have a good day.